In a perfect world, all software innovations would be in open source. We would not have to manage any patent risk and life would be easier. In the real life, patent risk is a major risk that we all have to take into account. Startup, open source communities and big companies, all of us. We therefore must find ways to stay safe without denying our values of open innovation. In a previous talk, we have mentioned the launching of a patent page. Today, we want to discuss about another initiative for membership to the OIN, Open Invention Network. I'm Audrey Plantureux, head of the intellectual property of OVH Cloud. And for this purpose, we have the pleasure to receive Keith Berger, the CEO of the OIN. Thank you very much, Audrey. It's a pleasure to be here and to welcome uh, OVH Cloud into OIN as, as one of its newest members. We very much appreciate your participation uh, and we pre appreciate the opportunity to provide support uh, to you as you grow as an organization and ensure that you can make good choices about the open source uh, elements that you use and the code that you use in your products. Many thanks, Keith. We are very, very excited uh, about joining the OIM. And now, this is it. The fundamental question we are all facing. How open source, so open source and software pattern can coexist? I think for many companies early on in the history of uh, open source, there was concern around being able to manage the duality of open and proprietary. Uh, and there still are many, many people in the community of uh, users, adopters, uh, developers of open source who have strong concerns about the, uh, the validity of software patents. The reality is that we have many jurisdictions <clears throat> and geographic zones around the world where software patents are uh, something that are a fact of life. Uh, I think many people are working on patent reform, whether it be in Europe, uh, whether it be in the US, whether it be in Asia, uh, Japan, the US, uh, and, uh, and China uh, as notable invention environments are places where software patents are accepted and uh, business method patents are accepted and uh, Europe is uh, is leading the way in, in trying to hold back uh, the uh, the floodgates in terms of uh, software patents being accepted. The reality is, even though they are not uh, embraced, that there are thousands of software patents or patents that implement software that are accepted and, and have been granted in, in Europe. The reality is that we have to accept that they exist and we have to recognize as intellectual property stewards of our organizations, where we should be filing and how we should be filing in an increasingly open source centric world. There are places to differentiate, but they're typically high in the stack, uh, the application layers, whereas what we've done uh, through a, a process of, uh, of working together over many years uh, and 15 years at OIM in existence, uh, we've recognized that where we collaborate, where we kind of create an opportunity for each other to build on each other's ideas, uh, we shouldn't be suing each other. And that's the fundamental principle behind OIN that helps to be able to create kind of a, a, a rational approach to the for companies that want to utilize patents, want to file, want to find differentiation through patenting and in, find innovation, support innovation through that process, uh, they can do so. Companies that don't want to have patents don't have to file patents. Uh, it's really up to the individual company, its investors, its, its approach and philosophy of its leadership. And so OIN is there to be able to facilitate and accommodate all elements of the spectrum from those who are completely opposed to software patents to those who embrace the idea that software patents can be a source of innovation. Uh, and so the, the fundamental concept is that when we collaborate, we work together, we create new value together, and we build on each other's ideas and create something, a new form of new novelty that could not exist without this collaborative element. 
And this is the really important part about open source that I think some people that only focus on technology skip over to, but there's a social component. It's really a social movement. The idea that collaborative development is, to, is, is authored by this notion of one plus one plus one uh, doesn't equal three, it equals six or 10 or 20. When we bring smart people from all around the world uh, to be able to participate in open source projects and to be able to innovate and add value that everyone can take advantage of. Okay, thank you, Keith. So what is the OIM? I mean, who are the founders, the members, and most important, is it accessible to all? I'm namely thinking to small companies without any patent portfolio. Yeah, uh, OIN is by design. It's a pro-competitive platform. It's open to every company, every entity, every individual in the world who might want to join. It's free. There is no charge. It's subsidized by IBM, uh, Red Hat, formerly Novell, now SUSE, Sony, NEC, Philips, uh, and more recently uh, has financial support from Toyota uh, and from Google. And so those eight entities essentially are supporting this, uh, the, the, the signing of licenses and the creation of this community. OIN is a community of interest that uh, it's establishing a set of norms, if you will, of how we utilize patents in an appropriate way in an increasingly open source centric world. And so we have 3,300 uh, plus participants in the community from some of the largest companies in the world, Huawei, Hitachi, Fujitsu, Toshiba, uh, as I said, IBM, Cisco, uh, LG, uh, Daimler, uh, companies all across the world that are incredibly large, have very significant patent portfolios. But then we have thousands of companies, literally uh, uh, over two thirds of our, our community is small to medium sized companies. These are the companies that need the support uh, most acutely because they can't defend themselves because they have very limited patent portfolios. Some are growing them, but, but they're still very vulnerable. Uh, if somebody wanted to come along and sue them and, and discourage them from being able to have freedom of action and freedom to cho of choice. OAN was really founded around the notion of a monolithic threat. Microsoft had positioned itself as a threat through its rhetoric and its actions uh, for the past 20 plus years. Uh, and OIN was developed 15 years ago with the idea being that it would serve as a counterbalance against companies like Microsoft that were con committed to proprietary and not comfortable in migrating to open source. I think there's an inevitability to open source that ultimately changed Microsoft's mind and they became a licensee 20 months ago of the OIN community and a participant and a collaborator with OIN in, uh, in uh, uh, different kinds of programs like an IPR program that we have with Unified Patents to limit the effect of poor quality patents by having them uh, uh, having uh, IPR is done to be able to support the invalidity of poor quality patents. And so they are now, they become part of the community, they become part of the culture, and they're learning as they go by their own admission to be to what, what it means to be part of this community. Because again, it's a, there's a social framework and a cultural framework that underlies the technical development. And what happens is that all these companies, whether they be incredibly large, incredibly small, no patents, many patents, they all have a common goal of being able to freely make choice about what code they use, how they use it, and to not be have to pay rents uh, through litigation and licensing to be able to make those choices about utilizing open source code. Thank you. Concretely, how does it work? We saw that there are cross licenses between the patents of the members, but that you are also acquiring a lot of patents. How do you choose the patent you buy? Yeah, I, we, we are very actively buying patents that support open source development in key projects. 
we're doing a number of things. One is clearing. We're looking at the potential uh, thickets where patents exist and where patents could be used to slow or stall the progress of Linux on a project by project basis. We're looking at the top 50, 60 projects in the world and looking to support those in a very um, enabling manner. And one way is to invent and to acquire patents that read on uh, core functionality uh, that is going to be important to companies that want to, and entities that want to adopt uh, open source uh, code. And uh, so we are, uh, we've spent a hundred million dollars and we currently have 1300 patents and applications uh, that are enabling of, uh, of open source key projects. Uh, we also, um, uh, are involved in uh, pre-issue and submission programs to make sure that high quality patents are the only ones that get granted. So we're constantly doing things like that as well. It's a, it's, it's really about community fundamentally, and it's about recognizing that we have a role as an enabler, as a facilitator to provide as much uh, freedom of action as we possibly can. And one way is through owning a portfolio that, serves to provide clearance, but also in the event that uh, that there is a threat nor like Microsoft that comes along again, we will own patents that allow a company to defend, its, defend itself, as we did with Microsoft during a uh, period where it was a, uh, a serial litigator attempting to sue on, on uh, open source related functionality. We would then, in those situations, forward deploy our patents to allow companies to defend themselves uh, so that they would not be uh, uh, essentially um, uh, exploited by virtue of the fact that Microsoft had a very large portfolio and they might have a very small portfolio. So we would arm companies to allow them to defend themselves. We would continue to do that. Many of the patents we have read on companies that are that are active as and and very much proprietary um, that may or may not become more activist in terms of litigation. Thank you. Keith, you have given a lot of information in a very short period. Could you kindly resume for ecosystem why it is important to join a patent non-aggression community like the OIN? I think it's what's important is to have a balanced strategy, what I call a mosaic strategy. There are multiple things the company can do in terms of building its own portfolio, in terms of making patent pledges, as, as you have done. Uh, and then there are you know, bilateral agreements that can all be also be entered into where there may be a situation where you need to do a cross license with someone else uh, on a bilateral basis. And then there are multilateral programs like OIN. OIN is designed to be able to support companies that want to adopt open source code. A uh, decision was made by the Linux Foundation uh, 11 years ago that it wanted to manage more than just simply the Linux project, which is kind of the mother of all projects, the largest and most prolific of all projects in terms of code release. So it's a very important project. But what they wanted to do is explicitly embrace large company participation in projects on a sector by sector basis, whether it be for the auto sector, automotive grade Linux, or whether it be LF Energy, which supports energy, the, tra the, the transformation of networks uh, for energy conveyance and, and moving, moving power on and off the grid. Uh, the five networking projects that relate to uh, communications networks and so on. They recognize that there was a great deal of hesitation from large companies uh, 11 years ago to participate in projects in, a, in, in, in great numbers. And they wanted to provide professional management, bring people together and create an opportunity for people to feel, feel comfortable about adopting open source code. And what they did is counterintuitive in some respects. Uh, if you look at the copyright licenses under which projects are, are, are done and, and operate, um, the permissive licenses like Apache and, and, and others don't have strong patent protection provisions, whereas the GPL v3 does. The GPL v3 had lots of other issues with it that discouraged 
large companies from wanting to participate. And so there was a very low bar to enter utilizing uh, the permissive license projects. And so they decided the Linux Foundation that they would do all their projects under permissive licenses and count on OIN to live in the slipstream of these projects. And whether it be, uh, you know, a, again, any of the projects that I mentioned or literally hundreds of others, uh, OIN comes behind the Linux Foundation and other project management organizations like Eclipse and others to be able to identify what's core and include it in the scope of its cross license so that everybody's obligated not to sue uh, and to, for to forbear litigation and to cross license patents that read on Linux system functionality, which is essentially the scope of the cross license. And so OIN is a natural partner to all projects done under permissive license, so, which is the majority of, of projects over the last dozen years or so. And so we, observe and you know there are new new project management organizations open atom is one that i that i uh that just was announced maybe two weeks ago that the chinese are supporting where it's uh, many chinese projects are being founded and managed there and the, it's expected that also uh, western companies will participate and found projects there as well perhaps and so we're looking at all the major project management organizations around the world to be able to protect that core code that people want to be comfortable adopting. And so the partnership that we have with Linux Foundation was very much fundamental, but that partnership ex extends to many other project management organizations as well. Many thanks, Keith. Uh, we wanted to thank you again for being with us today. It was very important for us. We are very proud to be part of the OIN now. We think that we share the same values. Um, and uh, it was uh, really uh, important to explain all of this uh, to our ecosystem uh, today. Thanks again. Thank you very much, Audrey. It's my pleasure. And we welcome you wholeheartedly.